Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a small form factor gaming PC using the all new AMD Ryzen 5 8600G. Recently on the channel, we built a super tiny mini ITX PC powered by the 8700G, but I've had a lot of people asking about the 8600. We went with a much more inexpensive motherboard, case, and RAM for this build here, keeping it really budget. In this video, I will go over all the parts used. We're going to build this thing up real quick, and then we're going to get into some testing. But uh, before we jump into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office, but the main reason that I use URCD keys is for their Windows keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Believe it or not, everything you see here on the table is all we're going to need to put this mini ITX gaming PC together. And the main component here is the all new AMD Ryzen 5 8600G. These are their all new APUs with built in RDNA 3 graphics. And with the 8600G, we get six cores, 12 threads. It's based on Zen 4. And of course, we got the 760Mi GPU with eight compute units. It actually performs really, really well, even with 1080p gaming. RAM speed is going to play a big part with these APUs. We've also got some storage here, our motherboard, and of course our case. For this build, we're going really inexpensive with the case. This is the AO9. On Amazon, you can pick these up anywhere from $30 up to $45. But if you don't mind waiting a little while for shipping, you can actually get these on AliExpress for around $15 to $20. I'll leave links down below. It's actually not a bad looking case. Super small form factor, as you can see here. Not much bigger than this Xbox controller. But when it comes to the power supply, we do need a flex power supply. Luckily, there are some inexpensive, decent ones on Amazon right now. For storage, I went with a one terabyte Kingston Fury M.2 NVMe SSD, and with this motherboard, it does come with a heatsink. I've got a non-stock heatsink on my M.2 drive here because I'm always swapping SSDs out, but just keep in mind, you don't need to buy anything extra. And of course, when it comes to the motherboard, since we're working with an AM5 platform, we need an AM5 board. This is the cheapest mini ITX AM5 motherboard that you can get right now. It's the Gigabyte A620i. Now, all of the motherboards on the market at the time of making this video don't have a BIOS that's going to support the new 8000G series CPUs, or APUs rather. But luckily, since we've got a Gigabyte board, it does support QFlash. And basically, what this allows us to do is update the BIOS on the motherboard without a CPU installed. So we can go to the latest version here using a USB drive. We will need to plug this in with our power supply. And I would highly recommend checking out this website. The creator has also made a video on how to use QFlash on these Gigabyte boards. Really simple to do. You can have this thing updated so it will support that new APU in no time. Let's go ahead and get everything together. First thing we need to do here is install our APU. Of course, we're using that Ryzen 5 8600G. If you wanted to go with the 8700G, this build would also work with it. But, uh, you know, it's $100 more than the 86. So I wanted to keep this one nice and cheap. And luckily, with these new APUs, AMD does include a cooler. With the 8600G, we get the Wraith Stealth, which should be fine for this APU. If you went with the 8700G, it would come with the Wraith Spire, which is a much larger cooler. But uh, for this one here, the Stealth is going to work out just fine. If you wanted to upgrade the cooler later on down the road, you could always do it. But I think this would be great. It's going to save us some money up front. Next thing we need to talk about here is RAM. Now with these APUs, it's going to use our system memory as VRAM. And theoretically, the faster we can get that, the better performance we can get out of the iGPU. But I didn't want to break the bank here. I did go with something that's actually really good for the 8600G. I've been doing some testing with this memory. It's actually 32 gigabytes of Team Group's T-Force Delta RGB at 6400 megatransfers per second. Definitely want to go dual channel with it. You can go with 16 gigs if you don't want to go with 32 up front, but this kit here is around 80 bucks. 
So we've got the motherboard taken care of with our storage, RAM, CPU, and cooler. Now it's time to put this inside of our case. Again, we've got the A09 case, and we do have some front I.O. I find it a lot easier to go ahead and remove this with two screws while we install everything. We can easily put it back in later on, even with that RAM installed. But the motherboard just slides right down in here, all nice and neat. The cooler isn't too tall here. We're using that stock Wraith Stealth cooler that comes with the 8600G. Now we need to install the power supply, and this uses a flex power supply. So I already had this one on hand. It's a fully modular power supply. You don't need anything over 200 watts for an APU build like this. But over on Amazon right now, they do have a 300 watt for $34. It's non-modular, so it might look a little messier, but it's going to keep that price way down and it's going to work out just fine for a build like this. So overall, I think it went together really nicely. Super small form factor here. It's actually a pretty clean little build. I went with that RGB RAM, which does add just a little bit to it. Now you don't need to go with RGB if you don't want it, but it's here and I think it looks pretty good. It's not overdone. So now all that's really left to do is see how this thing performs. And I'm gonna be running Windows 11 Pro on this. But remember, since we're working with a Ryzen APU and RDNA 3 graphics, we could actually install Linux on this quite easily. The very first thing I wanted to show off here were some benchmarks. And first up, we've got Geekbench 6. This was actually really impressive. I'm talking about this single core score of 2,709 out of the 8600G. I mean, that's really impressive. And when it comes to multi, we're at 12,378. Of course, we've only got six cores and 12 threads, but it's still looking great here. Remember, these cores are based on Zen 4. Taking a look at some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark, Night Raid coming in with a 28,586, Fire Strike 7,320, and finally we've got a Time Spy with a 3,210. With faster RAM, we can actually get a much higher score here. I've done some testing with 7,200 and we're up to around 3,600 in Time Spy. Remember, we've got 64 in this, so if you can splurge for a little faster, it's definitely going to help out with this iGPU. But these are synthetic benchmarks. Now it's time to check out some real world gaming. Here's God of War 1080p, original settings with FSR set to balance. Get an average of around 72 FPS. And yeah, I mean, it's definitely playable like this. If you wanted some more out of it, of course, you could take FSR to performance, or you could even use something like Radeon Super Resolution. And with that, you could run the game at 900p, but Super Resolution would kind of upscale it to 1080. It's really up to you. Next up, we've got Red Dead 2 just using the built-in benchmark 1080p with a low medium mix and FSR is set to balanced here. By the end, we had a minimum of 25. That was really at the beginning. I saw it kind of drop down, fall on its face. Maximum of 91, but an average across the board of 62. I also went through and tested with FSR at performance. Our average actually jumped from 62 up to 74. So this game's really playable on the 8600G build we have here. Forza Horizon 5, this is one of those games we don't need any kind of resolution scale, so we're not using FSR. 1080p, so it's a true 1080, medium settings, getting an average of 93 FPS by the end of this run. But I'll tell you, the way I've been running this on the 8600G is with V-Sync kind of locked at 60, high settings, and it will run at 60 all day at high. Spider-Man Miles Morales, you're also going to see that same kind of performance out of Spider-Man Remastered. 1080p medium FSR balanced. Average of 71 FPS. And just to put this into perspective for you, 8700G with the same exact setup, 6400 mega transfers per second on the RAM, we're getting an average of 78. So it's really not that far off with a lot of these games. I've personally been playing a lot of MK1 recently, and right now with the 8600G, we can do 1080p, but we do have to go down to low with FSR set to balanced. Still, I think it looks great here, and one of the best things is, you know, we do have some other technologies that we can use so we can kind of experiment, especially with that Radeon Super Resolution, and that's something I wanted to show you here with Cyberpunk 2077. So the way I've got this set up right now is medium settings. Our resolution is set at 900p, but I've got Radeon Super Resolution turned on. And in turn, what it's going to do is upscale this image to look like a 1080p image. To tell you the truth, it's really hard for me to tell the difference with our Radeon Super Resolution turned on at 900p. Getting that image upscaled does look pretty good, but we can get a lot more out of this game just by setting it to 1080p low with FSR set to performance.
In the end, it's not a bad performer at all, and when it comes to emulation, I recently did a video showing off some emulation on the 8700G. We can do up to around 4K and a lot of the higher end stuff with the 8700, or 1440p with the 8600. So with this little system here, you're going to be able to run GameCube, Wii, Wii U, PS3, you want to do some Switch emulation, anything underneath those, Xbox and even 360 works with this chip here. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I'll leave the links down below. I'll also leave some links for some faster RAM just in case you want to get a little more out of this. And with the A620i motherboard that we're using, it's kind of going to be hit or miss going over 6800. Right now with this, we're at 64. Performance isn't bad, but we could get more out of it taking that RAM speed up. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.